we're kindred spirits, Jared. You know, I always joke <laughs> around about Hindenburg, Omen patterns. Uh, and don't even get me started. Bulging bicep indicators. I mean, it's all ridiculous. And I like to have a lot of good time with it. But, you know, anytime I, I, I've tried to bury my analyst career and, and it was awesome. You know, it was an awesome time in my life. You know, it's where I started right out of school. It gave me absolutely tremendous skills that, uh, you know, we can go into at some point, but, you know, it's the more I try to outrun that decade plus of my career, the more I realize that I should just be embracing it. And I do embrace it every single day. You know, I started off it was, uh, as an independent research uh, analyst at Wall Street Strategies, Inc. And, you know, my job was to produce uh, coverage. Uh, I consider myself a sell side analyst for coverage that would ultimately get used by the big bulge bank, a bulge bracket firm. So Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, you name it. I made the reports, those analysts there and those traders and investors used what I did. So at one point, I, maybe this isn't a surprise to you, I covered 75 companies. <laughs> I, I was publishing research on 75 companies. And so what the hell does that mean? I, I mean, writing reports every single day, playing around Excel with Excel models, 75 companies ranging from, let's say 50 retailers, such as Walmart and Target, to electronic arts in the video game space. And at one point I even covered, covered oil companies. Um, it was just a fascinating time in my life and career. But again, you know, being an analyst, you learn skills uh, that you can't get anywhere else. And that has always been my secret sauce. You know, the ability to get on TV and talk about numbers in an interesting, fun way. I mean, I love it. I know you do, and you bring your enthusiasm and your game, your A game, to the uh, the stream every day. I want to ask you? You were talking about some of your your terms and some of the um, things you did as an analyst. You do a lot of street research. I mean, every Thanksgiving, you are in the stores. You are at Walmart, or Target, a lot of these retailers, and you're judging things like foot foot traffic and I don't know how many shopping bags people are carrying. Tell me about some of that kind of research. You are really, really digging up my past. I'm waiting for you to like come out with these. Hey, <laughs> I remember what you ate back in college. No, but you know, that was one of the benefits. So when you cover retail stocks, you cover Walmart. And when I was doing this, you cover American Eagle, Abercrombie. I always told my team and I always told uh, the investors and the traders that ultimately my research went to the story is always told in the store. You know, when I started out, and I guess I'm dating myself, and this is weird. I'm now starting to even say I'm dating myself, but <laughs> the internet was still emerging when I was starting out doing this stuff in 2004. And a lot of retailers that I covered didn't even have a website. And there were retailers that had a website, but it wasn't transactional. Uh, I believe at one point in Mavado, uh, one of the watch companies, they didn't have a transactional website, which now you think back and you're like, I only got NFTs. I mean, I mean yeah. I mean, can you, yeah, can you believe that? But still, I went, uh, and it was, and it's not just me. A lot of great analysts do this too, as well. I guess I'm calling myself great. But we went into the stores, and we were tracking uh, foot traffic in stores during the holiday shopping season. But that was really a byproduct of efforts every single day. You know, I was in the malls obsessively on the weekend, counting clothes on racks, looking for sizes that were not sold, touching and feeling coats. Uh, like my life depended on to see if a, a retailer took out certain costs out of the product and, and maybe they'll uh, meet an earnings number or margin target because they're selling cheaper crap, but that might cause consumers to leave. It was a whole web of craziness, but it was so fun. You know, the ability to go into a retail store and certainly, you know, you go to one retail store, you go to another one, and then suddenly you're starting to put together a piece to a puzzle on the economy, on a specific company, how they're doing. Then you put pen to paper, you publish a research report. And then before you know it, you know, you're out in front of a potential major move in the stock price up or down.